Hey guys, Barn Geek here. I wanted to do a video today uh, on Ask the Barn Geek video. Uh, this is a question that came uh, in through our uh, email. And uh, here's the question. Basically, um, the question is, can I... Uh, what What is the ideal moisture content for um, building up for barn timbers, for building a barn? And uh, the best way I could, you know, the, the, the person is looking for a specific percentage of moisture in the wood um, answer. And if I have to be, you know, if I have to be that specific, I'm going to say for pine softwood, uh, 18 to 20% moisture content. Um, for some of your hardwoods, maybe a little bit lower, around 12%. Um, because they're a little bit more volatile, they'll move around a little bit more, shrink a little bit more, crack, that type of thing. Um, but generally, um, you know, 12% is pretty tough to get to without kiln drying. I mean, you can, you can get to 12% if it's a dry time of the year or if you're in a dry climate, uh, just stickering the, the beams up. Um, <clears throat> that's your goal, is to get to that percentage rate and that's usually where wood acclimates to when it completely seasons out now <clears throat> that's ideal um can't do you have to get it down to 12 percent or 18 percent to build with and the answer is no absolutely not um you're building a barn remember so and and this is the way it's been done traditionally over hundreds if not thousands of years with timber frame uh, buildings they've been built green um, it's not anything new it's it's that the builders understood lumber and, and how lumber behaves when as it's seasoning so they built their barns in a way that took advantage of the characteristics of wood so that when the wood dried and shrunk or twisted or crowned, um, it would do so in such a way that it would be a, of an advantage for the structure. So if you're looking at a beam that's, that's tending to want to crown up, uh, you would want to install that beam so that the crown is up instead of down, you know, in a tie beam situation. You would want that crown to be up, so that way when weight is applied to it, it levels out. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, you want to be careful of, uh, uh, you know, if you're sawing your own logs, look for logs that are crooked. Logs that are shaped like a banana, you know, like a big boat or something like that. Um, that kind of material you probably want to save for, honestly... If you don't have a lot, a lot of it, if you don't have to use it, make it into firewood. Um, and when I'm talking about a banana, I mean a severe um, crown. I'm not talking about, a, you know, every log has a slight bow or twist to it. Uh, that's not a big deal. As long as you can get, you know, set it on your sawmill and get it, you know, flat within a couple of cuts. Um, if you're... If you set your log on the sawmill and, and you've cut, you know, a foot or two off and then you're, you're not cutting anything for a long time and then you cut another foot off the other end and you have to lower your mill, you know, six, eight, ten inches to get a full slab off, then you probably have too much of a bow on that log to, to use it for, um, uh, for anything other than one by siding or, you know, maybe some two by material, you know, like a loft joists or you know that things of that nature um so um moisture content isn't critically important especially if you use a, a good species of timber like white pine or douglas fir um red pine is is okay it's really it's less predictable than white pine but it is, you know, as if if you know what you're doing, if you know what to look for, um, you should be okay to use it. It really should. You know, it just really depends on the species of wood, 
um, you know, look at some of our other videos. I'll link those in the description about, uh, you know, selecting the right kind of timber to build your barn with. Um, but, uh, you know, just do your research. Look, look at the characteristics of the wood that you're um, going to use for your barn. If you're going to use, like, you know, elm. Elm is an excellent wood for structure. Um, it has a tight grain that, that kind of interweaves together and, and provides a lot of tensile strength. So, um, but as far as moisture content, the best thing to do is to cut, you know, if you're, you know, cutting wood off your own place, is to cut your timber down in the wintertime where there's the least amount of sap in the, in the wood. So it's going to have the lowest moisture content to start with. And then, you know, work the beams over the winter, you know, work them into... You know, saw them into beams or, um, you know, sticker them up uh, in a uh, pile that where air can flow through and, and, and uh, you know, paint the ends so they don't dry out too fast, especially if it's a hardwood. Um, and then just, you know, kind of let it season and you really can't go wrong. Um, the advantage of these barns is that they're designed, you know, in timber framing, is that it's designed to move. It's designed to, the structure moves. Um and it's not going to, it's not going to um, drastically affect the structure itself if the wood moves a little bit. Um, it's it's designed to take that. So so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, the only thing that you would worry about, you know, if if you wanted to put like say drywall on the interior of the barn, um, if you're finishing it out and you want to put dry as like a house. Um, and you're going to heat that space, um, that's when you can start to to have some issues uh, because, you know, wood shrinks very quickly when it's in heat. And if you you build green and you put drywall up, you know, you don't let it kind of season out after it's built. You start putting drywall up and you start, you know, insulating it right away. Um, you could have issues with, you know, trapping some moisture inside the wall. Uh, and you don't want to do that. So I would let the barn season out, you know, at least a year, a, a good solid year. Um, at the very minimum, uh, if, you're, if you're building in the spring or if you're building in the summer or maybe even in the early fall, let it season at least through the winter you know, maybe into the beginning of spring or, or mid or early summer before you do any kind of, you know, insulating or, or closing the structure in to the point where, you know, uh, the wood is, is, is encased in an impermeable material. Anytime you do that, you're going to have, um, you, you could have the potential of moisture getting trapped. And, and that's not what you want because it's because you'd, even in new construction grade lumber from the lumber yard, you don't want to wrap that, you know, in plastic. Uh, and a lot of houses do that nowadays. And it's, you know, they can get away with it because they're using, um, you know, some new engineered wood material, you know, kind of manufactured. But, guys, there's a reason why there's a big mold problem um, in buildings nowadays. And my belief is that they're too tight. Their wood buildings are not meant to be super tight. They're meant to breathe. And, th and that's what these barns are designed to be. They're, they're going to breathe. Um, it's not steel and plastic, you know. Steel and plastic, you can make it super tight. And it's not going to, you know, it's probably not going to bother anything. But it still could mold, you know. Anyway, I don't think that a sealed building is a healthy building to live in. So, but it, but that's besides the point. It's not really. That's kind of off topic of this video. But um, there you have it. I uh, that's my recommendation. Um, you know, it is it is what it is. It's a timber frame, old style barn. You kind of got to use the old methods of um, construction, which you know that's kind of like a crock pot, not a microwave. It takes take some time to let things season out but anything of lasting beauty takes a little time to get there so um, I hope you like this video if you do click the thumbs up um, share it comment below if you have questions that you'd like me to answer uh, through ask the barn geek 
I'll be happy to do so, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, Barn Geek here. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, farm animals and how noisy they can be when you're trying to make a video for YouTube. How they're silent while you set your camera up. They don't make any noise while you're adjusting things. But the minute you start, you hit the record button, it's bark, bark, quack, quack, crow, crow. <laughs> Just the bah, you know, and moo, you know. But anyway, and squeal. 